Notice of motion has been received from Councillor Josephine Bartley, seconded by Councillor Fessel Collins for consideration under item 10. Um, so we'll now move to item 10, and uh, this will be debated in the, the normal way. Um, so uh, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Bartley to move the motion and to Councillor Fessel Collins to speak in seconding it. Um, any councillor is welcome to take a call, but uh, just to recommend that if a point's already been made by somebody, um, uh, please don't feel obliged to repeat it again at length. And secondly, um, my intention would be to take it, uh, the, the uh, recommendations on voices, unless a, a division is uh, called for, in which case we would have a division. Uh, and if any councillor wants the recommendations to be taken separately, we can do that as well, but please indicate to me. Otherwise, my intention is to take the recommendations together. So could I now call on Councillor Josephine Bartley, please, to speak to her, her notice of motion. Uh, Councillor Bartley. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Tēnā koutou koutoua, e mō mō lava ona o whaktālo fa atu e le pa ia ma le mō malu ali au whia nei, ma lo le so fō moa, ma le langi e mamā. Thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to speak to this item and to receive the notice of motion. Uh, thank you to Chloe Swarbrick, MP, for uh, coming to us with this and asking for our support and acknowledging the role that we all play as leaders in our community for this city. Um, thank you to all those that spoke in public forum today and for all those that are continuously going to the DRC hearings and standing up for their communities. I don't, I don't want to cry. Okay. Um, yeah, and fighting for their communities because all of us as councillors, we all know the harm that our communities are experiencing from alcohol. I, I was all set for today, but I've been taking calls from media, from residents, um, everybody, is, they're just so scared in my community in Glen Innes right now because of the shootings last night or early this morning uh, where six people were injured, random shootings. Um, and, you know, you can't help but make the comparison. I mean, the, the connection, we have 11 off licenses within two kilometres of each other in Glen Innes. There is a connection between harm and alcohol and the easy access to alcohol in our communities. But if I go back to my actual speech, so the purpose of the act for the benefit of, was to be for the benefit of our communities. Um, that was the purpose that's in the legislation. The purpose was for the benefit of our communities. As we can hear today from public forum, from everything that we know as leaders in our communities, there is no benefit to our communities from this legislation. Those of us who are still single will understand or know the term catfishing. And that is what we have been sold by this legislation as a city. We've been catfished because this legislation is not for the benefit of our communities. We've seen uh, liquor license off licenses go up. In 2016, our off licenses were 823. March, like this month, our off licenses, um, 1,126. It is just so easy to get alcohol. Last night I was, um, I went to go get um, some milk. So milk, this is from um, GI, $2.80, one liter of milk. A can of alcohol, $1.80. It's just too easy, too cheap, too accessible. So many off licenses in our low income communities and this low alcohol policy would have given us some protection. But in the meantime, we're all sitting ducks because, you know, of the court action. But when this first came out in 2015, and I acknowledge our deputy mayor who was chairing the local alcohol policy hearings, you know, it's taken its toll on him as well. Not only has it gone grey, but his hairline is receding. But not only the effect that it's taken on, on us as a council, on, on councillors, but the effect that it's had on our communities. At the time, I had uh, an area in my um, community, Point England, no liquor stores in Point England. That's between Pamua and GI. And that was one of the areas that was going to be under this priority overlay. And I was so hopeful that we would protect the area from getting any liquor stores. 
50 percent uh, of the area earns 19,000. Um, no, the majority earn under 19,000, 50% are single moms. And I wanted to protect that area. And I was counting on this, this legislation and this LAP to do that. And now we're just sitting ducks. All of our areas that are in the priority overlay, all sitting ducks. Otahu, Mount Wellington, Manurewa, Mangere East, GI, Clendon, Avondale, Wellsford, Takanini all of us sitting ducks. So I hope we do support this bill because this will be some way to help protect our communities in the future. Um, in terms of normalizing alcohol, that is the part, the second part of what this bill will protect is the alcohol advertising in sports and hopefully uh, removing that because a lot of things go towards normalizing alcohol in our communities. It is not normal to go and buy a box of Cody's and a a bread while you're, you know, you're you're taking your kids to school. That is not normalised behaviour that we want to see. A lot of acknowledgements. I don't know what my timing is, but I just want to do the acknowledgements now before I get um, told that I'm out of time. Acknowledging KYAD for the work they've done to bring forward public forum, Jordan, uh, Mikey Tuala, and the work they're constantly doing in our communities. Um, Wayne Le Leverick, Leverick Councillor Al Filipina, uh, for the safety uh, working group and bringing us, myself and Councillor Collins, into that and the alcohol advocacy plan. And I hope this goes some way to achieving some of the goals in your plan. Um, our CSAs, my senior CSA, uh, Joe Wood, and uh, who left for England, and now Jason Howarth. This goes to show the quality, like that notice of motion is outstanding. I wish I could take credit for it, but I'm not because it was their work. Like this just shows the quality that comes out of um, our democracy services. So thank you very much, Joseph and Jason. Uh, again, I thank Chloe for her bill, Councillor Collins for seconding it. You may not have known that you were seconding it, but thank you very much. You were seconding it. Um, and what our licensing team do out there, our licensing inspectors, DLC, you know, a lot of our council staff, they want to do the right thing by our communities, but they feel hamstrung by the legislation. So rather than sweat and blood ourselves out there picketing and doing all the protests outside these liquor stores and going to the DRC and objecting in the DRC and not getting heard, the best way is to target the legislation. Go straight to it. So, you know, the legislation doesn't do anything to protect our community. So thank you, Chloe, for bringing this to the fore. Uh, thank you, councillors, for um, giving this some time and for what you guys are all doing, like me, in our communities to try and make them a better place and make our city a better place. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to add. I think that covers it. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bartley, and um, our sympathy for the incident that occurred at Heatherbank Street um, the early hours of this morning in Glen Innes. Um, hugely concerning six people uh, shot uh, and two uh, seriously injured, five in hospital. Um, that's a that's a terrible reflection on um, a, a trend towards a greater use of firearms in our community, and maybe and the way alcohol and drug. Yeah, and we, we and I, I, I I don't know, and I, I guess none of us yet know what was behind this. Um, that could well be the case that alcohol and drugs was behind it. That that is the norm in our uh, in in incidents of this kind. Um, but yeah, we'll be following. Um, the police inquiries on that very, very closely, but uh, our sympathy for that happening in uh, in your home area. I'm going to ask um, uh, Councillor Collins now to speak, and then I'll open it up for questions. And following questions, uh, I'll open it up for any broader comments that anybody wants to make. So in seconding the motion, uh, Councillor Collins. Oh, kia ora, Mayor, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. And thanks for taking this notice of motion as well and putting it on the agenda. I think it's extremely important. I want to uh, endorse the words of my colleague and friend, uh, Councillor Josephine Bartley, the emotion that was in that, the reality of that emotion, uh, and uh, for outlining parts of the, the law. So it's good we've got some lawyers around the governing body table because they can help us with that. I thought having seen the question or the, the the note that Dr Casey put on the sidebar around catfishing, I haven't been a victim of myself uh, to catfishing Dr Casey, but I did a quick Google search and it says that when we create uh, fake online profiles to trick 
people into finding love so that we can get money out of them. Well, Josephine, Councillor Bartley, I think that catfishing is the exact term that we should be using uh, this morning because that's exactly what's happened. Our communities have been fooled into finding a friend and these industries are getting mega money out of our vulnerable, exploited and poorer communities and they have definitely been giving up their money. Today we've heard about the direct causal relationship between alcohol advertising and how damaging it is when people are drinking. We've also been reminded of how terrible the DLC process is for many of our communities. That the whole purpose of <clears throat> adding these different these uh, amendments earlier on to the sale of and supply of liquor act was to ensure that communities felt empowered. This has been disempowering for our communities. I, when I was chair of the Otara Papa Toy Toy local board, I would sit in those meetings and feel like I was on suits or something. When the lawyers that they would come in with these big fancy lawyers whose hair had like a bottle of gel in them. They'd come in with their white shoes and they, you know, like a stiletto footing. And I'd feel completely insignificant and inferior as the lawyer would cross-examine me, thinking, if I'm struggling with this and I've got a wonderful support team beside me, how are our communities supposed to feel? It feels like they're being put on trial. They've been asked to give up whole days out of work. These are just our community members who are ordinary people who want to enjoy their community. We talk about this all the time when it comes to property rights, the, the ability to peacefully enjoy what we have. And communities aren't enjoying their communities because we've got these bottle stores everywhere. I had a couple of Papa Toy Toy bottle store owners ring me only a few weeks ago to say, what are you doing supporting this FSO? Why are you seconding this? And I'm saying, yeah, I understand that you want to make money, but at the end of the day, you might be a responsible person, that's cool, but at the end of the day, if you put a heat map over our poorer and exploited communities, you will find that we are inundated with off licenses premises. And so it's not good for our community and we are suffering as a result of this. I wanted to thank Chloe and uh, Chloe, I, I, uh, we were only on a meeting a couple of days, or yesterday it was, when we were talking about homelessness in particular for our young people and the challenges that they face. And in your words, Chloe, one of the things you talked about, Chloe, was bold political leadership. This is the time for all of us to show leadership for our communities, for the communities that feel left out and marginalised and exploited and continue to be so. For some strange reason, alcohol has been the hope for our communities. It's not. It's a, it's a complete failure uh, to our communities because it's so detrimental and it's so harmful. I was reflecting as I was preparing and then your catfish comment caught me a little bit off guard there, Councillor Bartley. And so I thought it was best that as the seconder, as your support crew today, that I, I tune in with the catfish comment. But I've been reflecting on, on the words of King Solomon, in fact, in the, who wrote the Proverbs. And King Solomon wrote, hope deferred makes the heart weak. And I think this is about hope. This is about ensuring that we stand beside vulnerable, exploited communities and offer them the hope that they deserve. And I think they have had weakened hearts because we're the families that see the result of the binge drinking of all of this access to alcohol in our communities. Every day when we leave and, and um, we're heading out the door so that Gapiriela can go to school, we pass three alcohol stores just by walking hey, across the park and into where, our, where we're parked. That's unacceptable. It is, it is normal. We have normalised alcohol stores where they're just there, they're there and they're bright. I think it's an orange colour or a green colour. And it's, it's normal. And my daughter looks at it and she says, wow, Dad, they're everywhere. And I said, yeah, they shouldn't be everywhere. And they shouldn't be everywhere, especially in poorer communities. So I would welcome all of our councillors to support this motion today. I want to say thanks heaps to Josephine, who has been adamant that we've got to do more. We've seen the harm in Māngere, communities like Māngere and Glen Innes, communities that she knows really well. All of us have seen that harm everywhere. Today, we can put a real stake in the sand 
A and say, this is not acceptable anymore. We want the best for our communities. We want them to feel safe. We want them to feel empowered and emboldened and knowing that they own these spaces. Because that's what we're about. We're about place making, space shaping or spatial planning and about local connection. And by supporting this, uh, this motion today and in, in the hope that the bill goes through, then we can say alongside our, our communities that we are about providing hope, hope for our communities so that they can get right past all of the, the sadness and the depression that exists from these alcohol stores that are everywhere. So well done to my good friend and colleague, Councillor Bartley, and I would recommend this, uh, this motion to everybody. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, so we'll take questions first. Uh, I have one question uh, in the name of Councillor Desley Simpson. Uh, so if you've got another question, please get it in the, uh, the sidebar as quickly as possible. Um, Councillor Simpson. Thanks, Mayor. Look, I'm just asking around uh, point 37 and the supporting information, and that's around current, uh, um, I think there's a, you know, I'm worried about the sporting groups that potentially will lose the money that's actually needed to run these clubs. I sub absolutely support the intent, but I'm just wondering what support that count we think that council can make, because this point 37 says um, that basically we're asking these groups to, many of whom may be dependent on revenue collected by alcohol marketing, um, to actually join the select committee process now, that'll be an expensive exercise for them. What sort of support can we give them? And do we have confidence that there will be other sponsors that will be able to come in and um, and take the role of that alcohol currently plays? So that, uh, that question is then to uh, the sponsor of the Notice of Motion, uh, Josephine Bartley. Uh, so, Councillor Bartley, if you, you need to, if you'd like to respond to that. Okay, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Um, Dr. Nikki Jackson mentioned the work, oh, yeah, and Chloe can also speak to this, mentioned the work that they had done about alternative sources for funding and support for our sporting codes. When I was on the local board, we did a lot of work there as well um, for alternatives for our sports groups uh, in terms of funding, besides funding from gambling. So I'm assuming we can do the same and extend that to um, alcohol. But uh, I'll let Chloe also speak to this because she's got some information too. Oh, kia ora, um, if I may. Apologies, I'm not familiar with the protocols. No, of, um, probably, probably out of order, but let's see here. Oh, anyway. look, it's just quite funny. <laughs> I'm happy, Sorry. thank you, Your Worship, for allowing that, yes. Yeah. Apologies. Um, uh, yeah, I was just going to um, refer uh, members to the um, link that I've put in here from Otago University uh, blog, which links through to a number of different alternatives. So there's obviously the excise tax is an opportunity here. Yes. So too is a uh, um, pot of funding, which the government may make available. Um, but I'd also um, remind members of the same kinds of fears that we heard about the sky falling in when tobacco advertising was banned and sponsorship in the 90s um, and those other jurisdictions around the world that have done exactly this and seen that there hasn't been the problems and the leadership that we've seen from some grassroots and professional codes to no longer take um, alcohol advertising. Thank yep. you. So supplementary, Your Worship. So you're in, in supporting A2, wind down alcohol advertising and sponsorship of sport, that gives a bit of time for some other options to come in. This is not a stop go thing. It's more about a bit of a winding down and some options in that as far as that um, um, select committee process. It's, you're not going to turn it off overnight. Is that, we just, is there a bit of time in there or? Yes, there's time. And as we know, with alcohol, nothing happens overnight. <laughs> I, I, I think the clear example of how we did away with tobacco sponsorship would be followed uh, in the event. Yeah. Uh, you know, nobody wants to punish the sports clubs uh, that need the, the support. Um, you know, you could put the excise tax up by a by a, a cent or two and then pay the money directly to the sports clubs without them having to sell their soul to uh, to, to promote our alcohol advertising. So the, the target will be the, uh, uh, the the people that make the money out of the, uh, the, the alcohol rather than the sports clubs that um, 
presumably we can compensate for that loss of uh, loss of income. Anyway, uh, it's not my role to answer questions. My apologies for that. Uh, are there any other questions before we move to comments? I, I have no other questions signalled. Uh, so I'll move to comments now. And the first request is uh, from Councillor Richard Hills. Councillor Hills. Sure, order, and thank you to all the um, speakers who spoke earlier and Chloe for the bill and um, Josephine and Efeso for uh, this notice of motion, obviously definitely support it and just remember the process and as um, Deputy Mayor said as well, as a local board member, I remember being involved with the process back then and it seeming like all was going to be a fantastic idea and everything would be addressed. Uh, uh, one figure that stuck with me at the time, which maybe it shouldn't be quoted in case uh, my memory is not or it's not accurate anymore, but I remember the proliferation in South Auckland, I think was 11 times the number of liquor stores than say in my community on the North Shore. And so uh, that was pretty shocking to me. Um, it may be worse now, it may be um, that I'm not remembering that figure from seven or eight years ago, <clears throat> but I was just uh, shocked. But you do, you go around the communities in um, uh, predominantly South Auckland and see there are liquor stores near the library, there are liquor stores near the schools, there are liquor stores near the youth centres, there are liquor stores on every main street and several of them and all the dairies sell the um, alcohol too. And I just think that is obvious um, when you hear the local board speak up over and over, um, come to the governing body, they come to um, the presentations, they talk about how they feel powerless and helpless and it feels pointless speaking up to the um, independent uh, hearing panel members on the DLCs. I've spoken to some of the DLC members and they feel powerless because often they will give really good uh, points and evidence and oppose uh, certain things, but it all falls down because actually under the law, um, the threshold wasn't strong enough. But, you know, everyone, it's the hard thing with anecdotal evidence um, to try and back up some sort of magical threshold that the the bill sets is that you can see the harm, you know the harm's there, you talk to everyone about the harm in our community, but then nothing changes because there's some bizarre threshold um, set by this process that is is clearly failing our communities. And clearly, as um, Councillor Bartley says, with those numbers growing um, sort of 20% in, um, in the time that's supposed to have been reducing those numbers. So, um, just want to back this up. We are a country that is surrounded by alcohol. It's 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 seen as the thing you celebrate with, the thing that you encourage, the exciting thing to share with your friends as a young person. I will say the good stats, uh, the Youth 2000 stats across the last uh, 12 years have seen a, a, a significant reduction in young people drinking. So I think what we need to do is ensure that um, that we aren't then bringing those young people into communities. Um, when they haven't been drinking, which is great, into areas where they suddenly have access all around them, no matter where they go, because there's so many bottle stores. Um, so I just want um, to talk about all the work done here, and I think it's you know another step forward, and hopefully we can get some more action um, to reduce the harm to our community. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Hills. I, I don't have any other comments on the list, but I, I'll just make a very brief comment myself. Um, 2,500 days since we put in place the local alcohol policy and a million dollars of ratepayer funds used taken up in court costs uh, because vested interests from promoting the sale and making money out of alcohol uh, have decided to stymie the wishes of our local communities and that that simply isn't good enough um, we we've seen enough and i don't need to elaborate on what the cost of uh, the cost of alcohol abuse has been? Uh, just the, the vivid memory I had as a member of parliament uh, dealing with children uh, who suffered from fetal alcohol syndrome. One of the saddest, saddest things that I've ever had to deal with, and that cost is not just a one-off cost; it's a lifetime cost. So you know, I'm saying this as somebody who drinks alcohol, um, but usually not to excess, um, but. We have to have a situation where we can curb the sale of alcohol and, you know, going back to what happened in Glen Innes last night without preempting uh, something, the, the explanation for that. Uh, I know from what the police say to me uh, that the real problem is the hours of opening of our off, off licences. 
that people have had a skinful of alcohol and then decide, um, you know, at 10 o'clock at night that they'll go down and top up at the bottle store. Um, there are things that we can do to limit the social harm. And we ought not to be promoting uh, the consumption of alcohol. People wish to consume alcohol, fine, uh, but we shouldn't be setting that up as the pathway to uh, how you can enjoy life and, and, and have a wonderful lifestyle, because often it results in the opposite. Um, I just want to make one last point. Um, I remember the first time I ever went to Chicago and I went into some of the deprived neighbourhoods and they were um, almost exclusively black neighbourhoods. And there are only three so sorts of shops that were open there. Uh, one were pawnbrokers, two were gun shops, and the third were liquor stores. And, you know, I could get on my high horse and say, what a terrible society that produces a community like that. But have a look at where the predominance of liquor stores are located in our own city, and it is in the lower income communities. Uh, and, you know, they are targeting uh, the people that probably can least afford uh, to be targeted by the promotion of alcohol and the cost of alcohol in so many different ways to their lives. So uh, I'm very much supportive of Councillor Bartley's notice of motion, uh, seconded by Councillor Collins. Uh, I thank her uh, and the people that have worked on this notice of motion. Uh, and uh, I, I, for one, would be certainly endorsing it. So um, I have one other comment that I've now received, uh, Councillor Chris Darby. Yeah, th thanks, Mayor. And um, look, I do support this notice of motion, don't get me wrong. I just do want to follow up on the point I made to Chloe, and I appreciate that you need to narrow your area of focus down sometimes when you're writing a bill, Chloe, and, um, and, and you have. But I, I just want to point out a somewhat of a dichotomy here. Um, and it is really important that we focus in on the sponsorship of sport, that's important, um, but alcohol harm is not just related to the sponsorship of rugby league and rugby and some other major sports. Uh, if you go to where uh, major youth uh, congregations focuses like Splore, the principal sponsor there is Corona. If I go to the Auckland Arts Festival, our, one of our festivals in our venues uh, it is sponsored by Villa Maria and a French wine company. If I go to the Auckland Theatre Company, Villa Maria pop up again, and the list goes on. So there's an issue here, and there's follow-up work for us to do. By supporting this today, we are actually saying, we, we, well, we actually have it upon ourselves now to follow up on the sponsorship that is directly under our control right now. We have Splore, occurring, sponsored by Corona, in one of our own regional parks, um, Auckland Festival, in our own arenas, et cetera. So we actually do have our own work to do as well. And I think this bill has just identified that work that we have a responsibility for, that it will not be able to capture unless it's amended, and it could possibly be amended, and um, Councillor, Coll Councillor Bartley and Councillor Collins might consider such an amendment to, for it to extend into cultural events. I think it needs to encompass all. Because remember, it is the lawmakers that sip the tattinger at you know, the opera and the arts festivals who write those laws. We should not be left off the hook. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Darby. Uh, I'll now come to a right of reply if she wishes to exercise it by uh, Councillor Bartley. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. No, I'm good. I don't think I need to reply. I think everything that needs to be said has been said. I need to go and deal with a lot of the neighbours that are freaking out by the shooting. So the less talk, more action, the better. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. So I'll put this motion. Uh, I'll do it on the voices. I've had no other request. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Uh, I declare that carried, and I just want to check uh, that I can declare that carried unanimously if there's no opposition to that. 
Okay, it's been carried unanimously. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Councillor Bartley. Thank you, uh, Chloe Swarbrick, for uh, having that bill before Parliament. We wish you well in it, and I hope that you get support uh, that it can go straight into Parliament rather than waiting uh, for the, the lottery system that operates on members' bills. And thank you also uh, to uh, those who have uh, made presentations today in favour of that. Um, thank, you, Mayor. thank you, councillors. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, Sorry, Bill, about you don't you don't look old. Sorry. Right, I, I <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Um,